In this video, we're going to have a look at the different tools you can use to make your writing process easier. And we will talk about tools for different parts of the writing process. For We'll talk about tools for outlining, long-form writing, dictation, tools for uh, writing in a distraction-free environment, and then some tools to help you with your language. Now, people often ask, there are many tools that you're presenting here. What is the one thing that I should use? And, and I would say, if you don't want to explore these different uh, areas of writing, Microsoft Word will actually be a very powerful tool. It has many good accessibility features, great features for productivity, and it is improving all the time. So I would say, you cannot really go with Microsoft Word, but I will also point you to some other tools, as well as some other great features that you can find in Microsoft Word. Now let's talk about outlining. And, uh, when you're outlining, that's a necessary part of the writing process. But you may have, have to make a choice between making a more straightforward traditional outline or using a mind map. And uh, so this is uh, an outline of um, a session on writing skills and tools that I've made. And you can see it's quite linear, uh, and it's made in a tool called, called Checklist. Uh, but there's, here is the same um, outline in a mind map format. And, and that, you can see, makes it much easier to see things side by side, to see the bigger picture. But of course, it's also perhaps a bit overwhelming and harder to, harder to read uh, in one go. So, so you may have to balance your, uh, your needs here as you're deciding. But this is not, using outlines is not just a matter of getting the right tools. It's also about getting the right skills and the right approach to your writing. So I want to talk a little bit about the process of, of outlining and how you can use the keyboard to make to, to take advantage of the process of being able to convert your, your thoughts into, into a structure of an outline. So you can, again, here you can use Microsoft Word as an, out, as a, as an outliner, just to make a very simple outline that looks a bit like this. And uh, here are two keyboard shortcuts that I highly recommend you, you, you learn. And that is because uh, in the process of outlining, you really don't want to put too many barriers between you, between your brain and what you're seeing on the page in front of you. And being able to use the keyboard rather than having to hunt around for, for uh, icons on the screen with your mouse is going to make the process much simpler, much more seamless. And the two shortcuts that for, make, for making simple bullet outlines that I want to recommend is Tab and Shift Tab. And uh, so this is what it looks like when you, when you use these things in combination. So I'm starting an outline, I assume to put I asterisk and space, and then we'll convert it into bullet point, and it's just item one, item two. And then I want to make a sub-item. So I hit enter, and then I hit tab, and they will, they will indent the, the bullet list, and then I'm going to have a list like that. And now I want to go back to the, to the main, uh, to the top level, and I do shift tab, and shift tab will bring me back up. And I, I've done all of this without having to touch the mouse once. And it, it is much quicker, and after a while it becomes completely natural for you, and you don't have to think about uh, the keyboard shortcuts, and it will, uh, the outline will sort of come from directly from your head into your, into, onto your screen without intervening effort. But uh, this is just for a quick outline using bullets. But again, there's other keyboard shortcuts that you may use to actually create a, an outline of an entire document that you can then rearrange and, uh, and manage a, a document from a simple article or essay to, uh, to a long thesis. And the, and, and, the, uh, and the keyboard shortcut is Alt-Shift combined with the left and right arrow keys. So this is what it looks like. So I'm starting with that bullet outline, but I'd like to put it into a bigger outline of a document. So what I do, I start typing, I type, Alt Shift left arrow, and what that will do, uh, what that will do after I finish the section, it will make applied heading style heading one, and it will put that section here in the navigation pane in Microsoft Word. And as you can see, as I'm go as I'm doing this, um, and it's um, it's applying styles of headings. So here I hit Alt Shift left arrow, and it's going to apply the same level as before. And now this is heading two, and then I can go to heading three by Alt Shift left right arrow, just simply going down that. Uh, that level of the outline. So once I've done that, that, in, that gives me a, a great, not only uh, access, accessible document, also a great way of navigating my own document, seeing what is the, uh, the bigger structure of my document. And you can always do that by accessing the navigation pane in Word, which is something you can uh, get through the view menu. And uh, once, once uh, you, have, you have done that, you can do other things as well. So, uh, so um, you can move things around uh, using the keyboard shortcut, Alt Shift, and the up and down arrow. So you can see here, I am not actually touching the mouse at all. I'm simply in the in the paragraph. I use the Alt. I select multiple items, and I go um, Alt Shift up and down, and I can quickly move entire paragraphs this way. And that again is much less error prone than simply copy and uh, copy and paste. So that is how to make outlines in Microsoft Word. But you may want to go beyond that and maybe use a mind mapping tool. So the mind mapping tool that I recommend is Mindomo, and Mindomo is um, a very simple way of 
it's an online uh, piece of uh, software, but you can also download a tool to your, uh, download a piece of software to your, to your computer, and it lets you create outlines in mind map. But it's, the great thing about it is that actually it's very easy to convert the outline, the mind map into an outline and back and forth. So, so that it's, it's a great tool for getting started with your, with the outlining and mind mapping process. Now, much of the writing you'll, you'll be doing is quite long form. So what are some tools that you may use to help you with writing long documents? And uh, here again, Microsoft Word can uh, be very helpful. And the, the same tool that we just used, the navigation pane and the heading styles that put sections in the navigation pane, uh, will allow us to manage the document as well. So you can see, as I'm in the navigation pane, I can grab these different sections. I can move them up and down the document. So that makes it much easier to manage them. And I can also right-click on, on them uh, and get a menu, I can promote or demote entire trees. I can select that whole section or subsection and copy it somewhere else. So it gives me a lot of control over what I can do with my document. Unfortunately, this only works in Microsoft Word on Windows, not, uh, not on the Mac. Uh, and once I've done all of that, I can also make the, docu the docu accident document much easier for my readers by inserting a table of contents that is linked to the sections and always updated based on what changes the document. So I go to uh, to the uh, re references um, section and I click on in, uh, table of contents and then I choose table of contents and it inserts table of contents with all the right pagination and all the links. But the great thing about it is once I have done that and I rearrange documents somehow, I add pages, uh, the table of contents can easily be made up to date simply by going to update table and choosing update entire table. I click on that and it automatically rearranges the table of contents according to what my document looks like. So this is a really great feature of Microsoft Word. But the one more thing that I can do with that once I've done this, I can convert it into a PDF that contains bookmarks based on these headings. So I will go to the file menu and choose export. And from export, then I can create PDF but before I create the PDF, I choose options first, and I make sure that I have ticked um, create bookmarks using headings. And once I've done that, then I can export that document into a PDF, and what that will generate is a PDF that is actually clickable, that I can, so, uh, so as you can see, now I can click on the table of contents, but also when I bring up my list of bookmarks, I see the bookmarks in here. So anybody who, who's reading my document can easily navigate it. And that, uh, makes it easier for me when I'm reviewing it, but also easier for all of my readers. And finally, there are some uh, very specialized tools for creating long documents. Many of them have been designed for uh, writers of fiction, but they're also quite popular with people who write long nonfiction documents, particularly when a lot of research is involved. So there's a free tool called Manuscript, but uh, there's also uh, a paid tool that is perhaps the best known, it's called Scrivener. And so, so that's something that you may want to explore. However, be aware that this is a very different approach to writing and creating documents, and you will definitely need to invest quite a lot of time in getting com comfortable with it and getting the most out of it. If you just open it and start, you think you, you'll be immediately productive, you will find that a disappointing experience. So perhaps I think f f at the beginning, start with Microsoft Word, but if you feel like you would like to take it to the next level, then use perhaps something like Manuscript or, uh, or, or Scrivener. Now, there's one more thing you can do to improve your, the, the ease with which you're writing, which is dictation. And dictation has come a long way. Uh, not too many years ago, you would have had to uh, purchase and train a specialized tool, but nowadays it is actually built into all the main tools that you have. So for example, Microsoft Word has a dictate button now, and that will allow you to dictate in multiple languages into, um, directly into your document. And that same actually works in, in PowerPoint. You can, you can dictate your notes in PowerPoint using that. Microsoft isn't the only uh, place that has that option. You can also use Google Docs for that. And uh, under Tools, you choose Voice Typing. The one advantage of Google Docs is that it supports many, many more languages than Microsoft Word. So if you, for example, would like to use it uh, for practicing a foreign language, you can do that, and you can simply dictate into a document. And the other nice thing about uh, Google Docs is that Voice Typing works really well on a mobile device as well, such as a phone or a tablet. So that's certainly a good way of dictating your text on the go. One more thing you can do uh, to m take some of the pain out of the writing process is to use a distraction-free editor. And, that, and again, this is very much an advanced um, a tool that you may want to use if you're already comfortable with other parts of the writing process. And distraction-free pretty much means that you, all you see on your, on your screen is text. 
Uh, very often people like to use dark backgrounds, but that's not required. This, what you see here, is a screenshot of Typora, which is one of the free tools you can use for that. And essentially, again, uh, you may choose to choose an, uh, see an outline, which is what I prefer to do, but many people will just want to see the text like this. And um, there are many different tools for that, so Typora is one, uh, quite popular. I really like WriteMonkey, which has uh, some nice features, but that, again, to really take advantage of WriteMonkey, you would have to spend a bit of time getting to know uh, all, all its great ins, ins and outs. And uh, there is another popular tool is IA Writer, which is available for all the platforms, including a mobile phone. So if you, if you think you might uh, want to write on a phone, there's actually this could be a good writing interface for you. Uh, I have recently started using Notion, uh, which is a note-taking app I've mentioned in a previous video, for a lot of my long-form writing, and it has quite nice distraction-free modes as well. It's not quite as powerful for writing as some of these other tools I mentioned, but this may also, if you're, if you're already using it for note-taking, this may not be a bad place to go for writing your drafts. And finally, we're going to have a look at uh, language tools, the tools that, you, that can help you uh, write in a better language and improve the process of comp composition. So perhaps the best known is Grammarly, and it's not free. Uh, it has a free version, but it's not entirely free. And that certainly can help many people quite like that. Uh, whether, whether you will find it useful, that, that, that's the question. You always have to be careful about going by all of its recommendations, but it certainly can point to, to quite a few issues. Uh, another competitor to Grammarly that supports more languages uh, than Grammarly is Language Tool. And so uh, that's, it's again, quite useful, and it works in, in a number of tools. And there's also the sapling grammar checker, checker that you can add to Chrome as, your, as, as a writing assistant. And that, that also uh, can be quite helpful. Uh, now, however, Microsoft Word has now introduced a new tool called Language Tools that's going to give you many of the same features as Grammarly. Not quite as advanced, but may actually cover all of your needs. So have a look at that and see may, maybe, again, Microsoft Word may be sufficient for your needs. One more tool I'd like to mention is the Hemingway app. It's a free online editor. It can also be downloaded for a small fee, but uh, it's not really that great for writing. It, it can be used as a distraction-free writer, but what, what you actually want to use it for is, is reviewing your writing. And it's particularly one feature uh, that I recommend is reviewing the length of sentences. So it will highlight in yellow or red any sentences that may be a bit too long. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to shorten them but, or make the sentence, split the sentence in two. But often when I, f I find when I have a very long sentence, that there's something wrong with it, that I've sort of jammed too many things together. It's hard to understand, or sometimes I didn't quite understand what I wanted to write. So I find it very useful to review my writing and seeing where some of the long sentences that I haven't perhaps thought through properly. And of course, shorter sentences make it easier for everybody to read. And uh, there are some other tools that can help with uh, language, for example, language prediction tools. Uh, so LightKey is one. Uh, it's, it's not free, but some people quite like it. Uh, and it is a way, as, as you're writing, it's going to, the same as on a mobile phone, it's going to predict uh, whole words or phrases that you may want to complete as you're writing. And that can save you a bit of writing. So if you, if you particularly are, uh, have issues, uh, with your uh, with, with typing, you may find find a tool like this quite useful. And again, Microsoft uh, Windows now has has a feature called predictive typing that you can turn on in settings. You simply type in predictive writing, and then on the typing, then you, you enable show text suggestions as I type on a software on the software keyboard. Uh, but uh, you that will happen anywhere you type in Windows. But you can also get that same feature now. It's it's rolling. It's been introduced very recently, and it's only just now rolling out to different installations of Word on Microsoft Word and Outlook, where it will s offer su suggestions similarly to LightKey directly in your documents. And you can see the suggestion, hit tab to complete them, and go on. So again, we'll save you a bit of typing. So that is, um, uh, that, that is all about um, writing. But one part of writing that I want to mention very briefly is referencing. And referencing uh, is something that the, the Bodleian Library offers great tools, but there are also separate series of videos that I've made about how I use my favorite reference manager uh, called Zotero. And I describe not only how to use the software, but also what is my workflow. So that is, you can find it on the Learning Productivity and Study Skills course. And I, I'm going to recommend that you go there before you go into, uh, uh, before you go into any further with referencing. One of the great things that, uh, that uh, Zotero is, uh, gives you is it, it allows you to improve the process of extracting annotations, your highlights from PDFs. Uh, and again, the videos will show you in great detail how to do it, how to go from an annotated PDF into having your notes in your reference manager, your database of all your readings. But uh, that is for the much more detailed videos uh, there. So in the, in the next video, we're going to have a look at organization and collaboration tools and we'll then finally after that go and talk about 
workflows.